we just upgraded our TV, and I have some thoughts. <laughs> okay, here's the deal in full disclosure. Manufacturers are trying to build groups and teams. I'm a member of Team TCL, and they sent over one of their newest six series TVs running Google TV. I'm really grateful, but I'm also not a TV reviewer, so I don't feel confident calling this a review in any traditional tech sense. I'm an audio guy by trade. I don't have room to dedicate to reviewing different TVs to compare and contrast. So my thoughts on things like panel quality are going to be more rudimentary. It has all the juicy HDRs and Dolby's, I guess. But my family, we've recently been going through some drama with our older Samsung QLED and the TCL arrives as we were looking to upgrade. So I wanted to share some impressions on setup and our initial use. I've been frustrated by Samsung's updates, making ads on our expense expensive QLED more intrusive, and the panel recently started having some strange issues where, like a show on Netflix would shrink just as it's queuing up the next episode, we'd start seeing glitching, which would remain after we would start the next episode or we would kick on the next movie. And we had to give up on the Samsung interface as apps were crashing and the TV stopped being able to connect to anything online. We got a little extra life out of it by hooking up a Chromecast and just using it as a dumb panel. We spent a lot of money and got two solid years out of it and one additional year of it starting to fail. And that's not very encouraging for such an expensive purchase. The TCL 6 Series is also a QLED TV with mini LED backlighting. Over two years of panel advancements, my anecdotal experiences, the TCL is putting out a brighter overall image, has noticeably better contrast, and matches current Samsungs for higher frame rates up to 120 hertz. I I'm not comparing against the absolute newest Samsungs. I just think it's interesting to see how much has evolved over roughly two years of TV technology. 4K content looks stunning. And I've recently, personally, I've been going back and rebuying some of my favorite movies when they're re-released in 4K Blu-ray. Those 4K rips look awesome. Detail and clarity make the biggest leap in modern horror. Because I'm not a huge fan of this current trend, you know, realistic dark in movies and TV. You know, like that one battle scene from Game of Thrones, or firing up the Fear Street movies on Netflix. On my Samsung, even with all the lights out in our living room, there'd still be scenes where you legitimately could not see what was happening, they made that film so dark. This new TCL is putting out a bit more juice and the options for picture calibration help a lot in quickly boosting image and color when you need to. I've been using newer Chromecasts a lot lately, so I'm pretty familiar with Google TV. The immediacy of clicking the picture settings, switching picture modes, and jumping right back into the movie is very fluid. My main complaint for image quality Smart TVs might be too clever for their own good. The TV's modes shift as you watch different kinds of content. Out of the box, Dolby, kind of, it kind of tries to take over everything. So I set the TV to match the content to SDR, HDR, or Dolby Vision. But your settings still change as the TV adjusts to different kinds of content. Dolby content gives you even less control. Limited options to adjust picture and refresh. Switching to standard HDR, I can set more specific modes like movie mode or PC mode. These are critical because they also more close Closely follow the content. For example, I hate the look of movies when there's an overly aggressive motion smoothing high frame rate applied, now, especially watching a film like The New Dune. Motion smoothing kind of ruins that film, making up intermediary frames you're gonna see a ton of glitching across those beautiful desert scenes. On Roku-powered TCLs, you can hit the action smoothing setting and that helps rein that in a lot. It's very easy. Google TV is just a little too clever for its own good. I had to dig through a flow chart of options to get a handle on what settings would activate while watching what kinds of content. For a smart TV, I don't think that's very smart. So I, I tend to leave the TV mostly in movie mode or PC mode. The PC mode is kind of nice, where the TV does a great job adapting to the frame rates coming off the little nook. 
have a little Intel PC tucked behind my TV. And similarly, the audio settings can be a bit convoluted too. There are numerous options to use the built-in speakers and HDMI and Bluetooth, but the sound bar I'm currently using under our wall mount is best connected over optical. And that's the forgotten connector. I'm currently having to use two different remotes because I can't reprogram the TCL remote to control my old sound bar. I personally, I, I just have terrible luck connecting ARC and HDMI accessories. They just never want to talk to each other. So it's a bummer that this TV is so good at hooking up most accessories and literally fumbles this one connection. The tuning and equalization options are pretty good though. The voice tuning is subtle, but does help lift the mids to aid speech, especially in action films where you've got so much rumble it can be hard to hear what characters are saying. And same with the normalizing volume. What little TV we still watch with commercials, I don't feel ads blast at max volume compared to the show. The TV is, is kind of helping smooth all of that out. But about the only serious hiccup came during setup. You know, I love that the TV can be set up as a smart display or a dumb display, but you can't complete the Chromecast activation without logging into a TCL account, which I didn't have when we got the TV, so I tried to create an account. And no matter how many times I set up an account with a strong password, the TCL site would not accept my login, which meant I couldn't finish the setup on the TV. I eventually figured out that the TCL account password would not accept punctuation in my password while using a phone browser, which was a supremely frustrating stumble during an otherwise smooth setup. And, and especially after reading up on the recent Vizio disclosure over profits, this is more of an industry-wide critique, not necessarily a TCL thing. I just think it's a smart idea for people to start reading up more over the terms of service they agree to. With all smart TVs these days, you agree to a lot when you attach your login and credentials to a manufacturer account. After the terrible experiences I had with Samsung's TV software, I really like the idea of picking a good TV panel and then bringing your own brain to stream or watch content. If it's traditional antennas, Apple TV, Chromecast, Fire Stick, Roku, Nvidia Shield, you can swap out the displays and just hook up whatever source you want to use. While I was trying to troubleshoot the TCL login, I was just using one of our older Chromecasts. So the TV disconnected from my Wi-Fi was pretty much cool with whatever source I wanted to use. When I tried to disconnect my Samsung from our Wi-Fi, that resulted in errors on screen that would take over a minute to clear every single time we turned that TV on. And eventually the TV just stopped being able to communicate with Samsung servers. The TCL not being so argumentative, <laughs> that's probably the biggest noticeable upgrade for our living room. So I'm really digging this TV. It's fantastic image quality. It's been a joy to use on my highest quality Blu-ray rips, PlayStation gaming, and the little mini gaming PC I have connected behind the TV. In this modern age of televisions with computers built into them, this has been the least frustrating setup and operation of any TV currently in our home, where we've gone through a terrible Samsung, a reasonable Vizio, an okay LG that's still in our bedroom, TCL hasn't been completely painless. There are still some glitches I hope they can address with future software updates, but we've suffered far fewer rage quit moments where I just want to chuck the remote through the screen. A television is such a primary entertainment tool, we should never get that angsty about trying to set one up. More than anything else, it's just absolutely incredible how much TV we can buy at lower and lower prices. Full MSRP, the 6 Series TCLs are reasonably solid bargains, where they might fall just behind Samsung and LG at the bleeding edge of display tech. I think we're rapidly approaching 4K display quality improvements at further diminishing returns. And a lot of this conversation about quality is highly dependent on the content source the panel really getting to use better information. But as I shoot this video, the 6 Series TVs can be found on pretty decent sales. And this TV at $800 is a great deal. It punches above the budget we were looking 
to replace our living room TV. Undercutting a similarly spec Samsung or LG by 50 or 100 bucks might not seem like a huge deal, but every dollar helps. And honestly, I'd pay extra these days just to avoid most smart TV interfaces. So I genuinely, I can't be a full on TV reviewer. I just, I, I do not have the room, nor do I have the technical chops to dissect image quality in a meaningful way. Being a part of Team TCL, their timing was spot on as we were already shopping a new TV. Happily, it's been an upgrade in nearly every way that matters to us. I just wish I could control my soundbar from the TCL remote. So I gotta throw a huge thank you to the folks at TCL for including me in their new Team TCL Club and sending this awesome TV my way. I will of course leave some links down below for more information on TCL products where you can shop some of those products online. They've got great earbuds and TVs and smartphones, just a whole broad collection of consumer electronics. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. The support for these videos has been greatly appreciated. Those of you who are, click underneath these videos, maybe shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. Full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the galaxy. True story, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. And the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.